Today marks 35 years since the bridge collapsed into Schoharie Creek. Five vehicles were sent into the water, 10 people were killed. On this anniversary, we take a look back on that fateful day. Here's reporter Chris Bruner with his original story. A routine ride on a rainy Sunday morning here on the New York State Thruway must have turned into a few moments of stark terror for unsuspecting motorists. Several days of swirling floodwaters apparently ate away at the concrete pier foundations, holding up a 200-foot section of the highway. It collapsed around 10.50 a.m. Local residents heard the roar. Amazingly loud, rumbling noise that just, I, it's truly hard to explain because it's just not, not believable. Before anyone could flag down the traffic, the gaping wound in the highway claimed several victims. We have witnesses that are telling us that one tractor trailer and four cars. We have another witness that tells us that he only saw one tractor trailer and one car. So we do have, uh, we do have some confusion at this point right now. Marlon Stanley of Amsterdam saw the down span from a nearby crossroad and immediately flagged down oncoming traffic. Do you feel like you may have saved some lives? Well, I hope so, but I, you know, I have no, no knowledge of whether I did or not, but I hope so. Stanley then ran to the edge of the demolished bridge and saw two upside-down vehicles. High water in the Schoharie Creek at this time of the year traditionally closes bridges over it, except for the New York State Thruway, and it was open this morning when it unexpectedly collapsed. And in fact, just two years ago, construction crews completed rehabilitation work on this span. Stunned thruway workers joined police at the disaster scene. There was nothing anybody could do for the victims. Divers would have to wait until the swollen floodwaters recede. More of the structure collapsed with a muffled roar. Late this afternoon, a Cadillac, apparently belonging to one of the victims, bobbed to the surface a half mile downstream. Its roof flattened. Rescuers couldn't get near it. With New York State's main highway cut in half, traffic will be diverted down I-88 and along Route 5 for an indefinite period. Chris Bruner, the 30-Minute News, Montgomery County. After the floodwaters started to recede, cars started to emerge. The water receded 15 to 20 feet, revealing this truck. The cab no longer connected. Bodies were found in different vehicles. Witnesses said they saw vehicles careening off the bridge, like Schenectady Gazette photographer Sid Brown. Then we saw the, um, the bridge collapse and uh, immediately a truck went over, a truck heading east, went over into the uh, Schoharie Creek. And then the next thing we saw about 30 seconds later, or no, maybe five seconds later, was a white car flying through the air. Reporter Chris Bruner, who spent several days covering this story, spoke to us five years ago, looking back on his coverage. So what do you remember from that day? Well, uh, it was a day I wasn't supposed to be at work. It was a Sunday and somebody was off, so I got called in. And I wasn't too terribly unhappy about it because we had some, you know, reasonably decent breaking news that day, the weather. And uh, we knew there was gonna be flooding out in Schoharie County, so photographer Paul Munson and I jumped in the car and started heading out the throughway because that was the fastest way to get there. And suddenly on the scanner came, throughway is closed, the bridge is collapsed. And we looked at each other and was like, wow, this is something. We got to Amsterdam, the state police had blocked the highway off and were sending everybody down to Route 5. We tried to beg our way around so we could just take the, the empty beeline out to the bridge, but they wouldn't let us do that for understandable reasons. So we got out the map, we found a way to get there, kind of back roads and get, get away from all the big traffic jam that landed on Route 5. And we got there pretty quick and it was kind of a strange scene because there were no ambulances, there were no you know, great hordes of, of uh, rescuers or anything. The state police were there, but what could they do? The bridge was gone, the center spans were gone, and people were just kind of standing around going, wow, what happened? Eventually, the rest of the bridge had to come down and the investigations had to start. After two days of trying, demolition experts pulled out all the stops. But before we see the final demise of the West Span, let's back up to yesterday. Engineers wanted to begin removing the remains of the bridge so they could determine a cause and rebuild. But the precarious West Span made it too dangerous for crews to go to work. So they tried pushing it down with huge jacks. Still more pushing later in the day got nowhere. This morning, demolition experts used 19 pounds of high explosives to try to blow the bridge up. It didn't work. This time, they'll use about twice as much TNT. At great risk, explosive experts loaded their charges into the gaping cracks in the concrete piers, all the while working underneath 350 tons of steel that might fall at any moment. At 2 o'clock, 70 pounds of high explosives were set off.
When the dust finally settled, workers moved right in to begin the cleanup. They could have a preliminary determination on the cause of the collapse in six to seven weeks. Chris Bruner, the 30-minute news along the Schoharie Creek. And now, 35 years later, we continue to remember the victims and everybody impacted by that fateful day. We will continue to bring you a look back on significant stories of the Capital Region, honoring the past and highlighting how far we've come. Reporting with coverage you can trust, I'm Rachel Teedy, opening News Vault 13.